My name is Tony Lamb, and I'd like to welcome you to the Azusa Street Mission and Revival Bible Study and Prayer Group. And uh, we will ask for prayer requests. Are there any prayer requests? Yes, I do. All right. I, I have a couple of praise reports. Um, Amen. Gerald had had two heart, <coughs> excuse me, two heart attacks a couple of weeks ago. He is doing good, and he is at home. God is awesome. Thank you, Jesus. In little Kaysen, uh, the little four-month-old that, that had heart problems and had the heart attack, God saved him, and he's doing good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. I have Thank you, Jesus. one brand new prayer request from Tracy in Ottawa, Canada. Um, it's for a young man by the name of Jeremy. She would like if everybody would pray for him for healing and for his salvation. She tries to talk to him, and he hasn't let her in yet. So I'd like to keep prayers going, going for all of them because things are things are doing good. I have Tony. I have Mike and Gail. All our love and Thank God's you. blessings. Cheryl and Gerald and Krista, <coughs> keep them all in your prayers, please. Sandra and her children, Joshua, Elizabeth, and Emmanuel. Sandy in Minnesota, God's presence and blessings. Tracy for God's protection and God bless her kindness. Uh, Jameson and family, John in Rhode Island, Laurie and her husband, their son AJ, and the mom Debbie for continued healing. Donna, God bless her, Amen. God's presence and healing. Amen. Pray for uh, Donna. Yeah, pray for Donna. Gary and Melissa and their children, Gary in Ohio, Ray and Sharon for God's blessings and guidance. Uh, Susie, Susie, Jerry, Holly, David, Chris, Jim and James, Seven and, and uh, the kids, his dad, David Bird, James Motley for God's guidance and blessing, Steve, God's blessings, and Anita Nixon for God's presence and guidance. Amen. Any more? Uh, Amen. Yeah. That's that. Okay. okay. Um, we have uh, Tony and Bobby Lamb family. Thank, Thank you. you. Roger, uh, Dawn, and Andrew, Raymond, David, Liz, and Desmond. Extra prayers for David because he really needs it. Yes. Uh, Earl and Karen Brown, Michelle Brown, um, Yolanda and Josh Morale, Phil and family from Spring Hill, Florida, Jill and Jay Yates from Florida, Tracy and Steve Farris and family from Florida, and special prayers for Tracy's grandson Maverick. He is still has that bad case of oh, eczema. Baby. And They've mm -hmm. gone to another doctor, and still nothing has been done. Oh. And uh, we sent them uh, a number of things that they can probably follow up on, hopefully to help them. And we have Ron and Elizabeth Lovelt, uh, Evelyn, Zena, and family, Heidi, Alex, uh, and family, Mimi and Tina, Linda O'Brien and family, Sarah and Thomas, their children, and nieces and nephews. Gail sent children, Jack and Kathy Casey, Jesse Higgins and children from Old South. And she's a sweetheart. She said if we need any help, she'd be more than coming to help us. Oh, that's sweet. And then we got my daughter and son-in-law, Michelle and Matt, and my grandchildren, Aiden and Liam. And then we have Harmony, who broke her ankle. We don't know the status of that anymore because I haven't seen the, um, I guess it's her mother. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we have Gil uh, and uh, Barbara, and Gil's pastor and Kate Coral. Pray for them. And we have Pastor Keith and Cindy in Cape Coral, Florida also. Um, and then we got uh, Pat, who, who um, we met at Old South, um, and her husband. And then we have our neighbor next door to us. Her name is Pat, and we pray for her and her family. Is that it? All right. Okay. We're going to open with a prayer, and then we're going to pray for these prayer requests, and we invite you to pray along with us. 
And just because a name wasn't mentioned, we're, we're praying for everyone yes, that's, that's got a request for prayer. And so we pray for those named and those unnamed. And we pray for you. And we, and we pray for you. Blessed, most merciful Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before you humbly, Lord. Lord, we beg and we plead, Lord, that, that you lead us, that you guide us in your perfect will, your perfect will, because you are perfect. You are perfect everything in every way. Everything is perfect from you, Lord. And your love is perfect, too. Yes. And Lord, we pray humbly, Lord, we beg, Lord, that, that you Thank lead us and guide us in your will, that you heal these that we've called out before you, Lord. We pray, we beg the blood of Jesus, come, come down and, and touch them, Lord, cover them, Lord, and heal them, Lord, heal them, Lord. And we claim the word of God. We claim your word over these people that we've Amen. called out. We've Amen. named and unnamed. We yes. claim the word of God over them, Lord. Yes. And Lord, we invite your, your, your presence to move among us, Lord, to touch yes. each and every heart that's here, Lord. Yes. Lord, we don't do this for our glory. We do this for you, Lord, to honor you, to worship you, to glorify you, lift you up most high, most high on the throne, above all, above everything. We love you, Lord. We love you with our whole heart. Every fiber of our being, we do this for you, Lord, because we love you. Because you gave, you gave so much for us. The price that you paid for us, Lord, we so don't deserve what you paid for us, Lord. We so don't deserve your love. But Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your sacrifice, for your precious blood, your precious blood that was shed for us and the life that you freely gave for us we so don't deserve it lord we so don't deserve it lord and there's nothing there's nothing that we could ever do to, to pay you to pay you back for what you've done for us lord and we love you we love you so we dedicate our lives to you lord we offer up ourselves as a living sacrifice to you lord so lord we pray lord for these that we've called out both named and unnamed lord we pray for them all and we invite your presence to move among us to lead us and guide us we we'll pray all this in Jesus', Jesus mighty, mighty, mighty name. name. Amen. 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 I uh, want to remind everybody, there are is, there is some questions as to what we believe. We believe in this, the King James Bible. We believe every word is holy and is inspired from God. And so this, this, is, our, this, is, this is our Bible. This is the one. The only Bible, the only true inspired word of God is the King James Bible. And, and we follow that word. We believe every word yes, in that Bible. And I I suppose that if I were to change my message to a, a more loving, kind God and a, and a message that America will come back into power and greatness again and, and how much God loves America and can never harm America and, and only protect America and restore America to, to greatness... Again, I, I, I suppose then I would be more popular and have millions of subscribers and millions of viewers and I'd be on talk shows and talking about how much God loves America and I also would have millions in the bank. I'd have a million dollar home, ride around in, in the back of limousines and maybe even have a jet airplane or maybe even five like, like some preachers. <laughs> but God did not call me to be popular, to be rich. God called me. To tell you the truth and he did not call me to live in a mansion or, or to own jet airplanes mm -hmm. but god called me to be a humble servant to be a watchman and to warn to warn the people as to what is to come and to warn the people that judgment comes and to prepare for the rapture and to remind you that you do not want to be left behind now i have made many videos and wrote books about the tribulation and all its many horrors and to most it's like talking to the deaf, a deaf audience. They act like they do not care because they do not believe. Now I could quote reams of scripture. I could give you people's names like David Wilkerson, Dimitri Dudeman, Henry Gerber, and many others. The real watchmen called by God for this work are all crying out, are all crying out the warning. And many of those like I have been seen Many of those have seen the tribulation and the destruction that's coming to America with their own eyes, much like I have. But still, the people refuse to listen. The time of warning is drawing to a close. Then judgment comes. You were warned, but, the tribute, but, but after the rapture, it is too late. 
Then you must endure the tribulation and all its many horrors. Death and destruction on a scale never seen in the world before. Somewhere between six and seven billion people will die. And America, America is totally destroyed and will never rise again. This is also, this is also in scripture. Many, most churches deny it. They refuse to acknowledge it, but it's there. It's there. It's in Jeremiah 50 and 51. It's in Revelation 18. Read it for yourself. Read it for yourself. It tells you what's coming to America. So we will start out with uh, 1 Samuel uh, chapter 17, if you want to follow along. Uh, this will be uh, all of uh, Samuel, 1 Samuel 17. So Gail, will you start out reading Samuel uh, 17, 1 through 5? Yes. Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle, and were gathered together in Shaphat, which belongeth to Judah, Judah, and pitched between... I think it's Shachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachachach
and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines, and spake according to the same words, and David heard them. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him. They were sore afraid. And the men of Israel said, Have ye seen this man that is come up? Surely to, divide, uh, surely to defy Israel is he come up, and uh, shall be that the man who killeth him, the king, will enrich him with great riches, and will give him his daughter, and make his father's house free in Israel. And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine? and taketh away the reproach from Israel. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine, that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people, people answered him after this manner, saying, So shall it be done to the man that killeth him. And Elab the eldest brother heard when he spake unto the men, and Elab's anger was kindled against David, and he said, Why comest thou down hither? with whom thou hast left those few sheep in the wilderness. I know thy pride and thy naughtiness of thine heart, for thou art come down from, that thou mayest see the battle. And David said, What have I now done? Is there not a cause? And he turned from him toward another and spake after the same manner. And the people gathered, uh, the people answered him again after the former manner. And when the words were heard which David spoke, they rehearsed them before Saul, and he sent for him. And Saul, David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with the, this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with, with him, for thou art but a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and they came a lion and a bear, and took a light lamb out of the flock. And I went after him, and smote him, and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he rose against me, I caught him by his beard, and smote him, and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. David said, moreover, The Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion, and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. And Saul armed David with his armor, and he put a helmet of brass upon his head. He also armed him with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon his armor, and he uh, essayed to, to go, for he had not proved it. And David said to Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off him. And he took off his staff with his hand, and uh, chose him five smooth stones out of the brook, and uh, put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a scrip, and his sling was in his hand, and he drew it near to the Philistine. In other words, David was was given a, a armor, and was given a sword, and, and given a spear, and was given all this all this armament, but it probably was so heavy that he couldn't even he couldn't even move with all this armor on. He was armored up with the king's armor. But David, being a, a boy, a boy, but a man of God, David didn't need the king's armor. David needed God's yeah, armor. God and then the Philistine came on and drew near unto David, and the man that bare the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy and of fair countenance. And the Philistine said, Philistine said unto David, 
am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air, and to the beasts of the field. Then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword, and with a spear, and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defiled. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, and I will smite thee, and take the, thy head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air, to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. And it came to pass when the Philistines arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hasted and ran toward the army to meet the Philistines. And David put his hand in his bag, took hence a stone, and slang it, and smote the Philistine in his forehead. Then the stone sunk into his forehead, and he fell upon his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistines with a sling and with a stone, and smote the Philistines and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran and stood upon the Philistine, and took his sword, and drew it out of the sheath thereof. And he slew him, and cut off his head there, therewith. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. And the men of Israel and of Judah arose and shouted and pursued the Philistines until thou come into the valley and to the gates of Ekron. And the wounded of the Philistines fell down by the way to Sharon, even to Gath and unto Ekron. And the children of Israel returned from chasting after the Philistines, and they spoiled their tents. And David took the head of the Philistine and brought it to Jerusalem, but he put his armor in his tent. And when they and when Saul saw David go forth against the Philistine, he said unto Abner, the captain of the host, Abner, whose son is this whose son is this youth? And Abner said, as thy soul liveth, O king, I cannot tell. And the king said, Inquire thou whose son the strip, stripling is. And as David returned from the slaughter of the Philistine, Abner took him and brought him before Saul with the head of the Philistine in his hand. And Saul said to him, Whose son art thou, thou young man? And David answered, I am the son of thy servant Jesse. The Bethlehemite. God used a boy, used a shepherd boy. Yes. No armor, just the armor of God. No weapons, just a simple sling and a rock. And God brought down through David this this giant. So when all hope is lost, when we are at our lowest point, right when it seems we have lost everything. I mean everything. God shows up. Trust in God. God takes and uses the lowly, the meek, the untrained, the one who everyone discounts. And that person sets aside the king's armor and sets aside the king's sword and spear and puts on the full armor of God and Amen. trusts in God. Amen. God uses the lowly shepherd's weapon, a rock on a sling, to slay the giant. Are you getting a picture of how God works? Are you being threatened by giants right now? Remember David and Goliath, and also remember that no matter the odds and no matter the enemy, God always wins. Yeah. And even and even if you lose a battle, that just may be God's way to take you in a different direction, to fool the enemy into thinking that he has won. God is surprising and amazing in, in so many ways. Yeah. And God has supported this ministry, his ministry, unlike anything I have ever seen, yeah. I have ever seen. Yeah. I witnessed miracle after miracle over and over and yes. over. Every time I had need of anything, 
in his ministry, God always provided. Yes. If I needed $1,200 for a pallet of pails to build water filters with, every single time God would show up and God would provide the funds from yes. somewhere for, for his Amen. ministry. Yes. When I first started this ministry, I was led by the Holy Spirit to do a mailing to all Assembly of God churches and pastors throughout the United States. And from our kitchen table, we mailed out over 10,000 pieces of mail. Hallelujah. This was a wake up and a warning letter to the Assembly of God churches that their candlestick was about to be removed. I had no money for the postage, but the Holy Spirit would move upon me to prepare 60 letters to go out. So I would, and they'd be sitting on my desk without postage, ready to go. And then, then, then it, it, out of nowhere, out of nowhere, somebody somewhere would send me either three books of stamps or send me $60. And every single time, every single time, God is so good. Hallelujah. God uses the meek, the untrained. Hallelujah. God And God used me for his Hallelujah. purpose. And I praise God. I give him Thank all the glory Jesus. all the time. And I just, my goal is to remain his humble servant. That is my goal. Amen. This did not happen once, but this happened many times. Many times. I, I never realized it, but God has been preparing me for an even bigger challenge. Now, God was hand-holding me and teaching me to walk by faith and not by sight. So now I have gone about four weeks and I've only received one letter in the mail. And before, before it was nothing to get two to four letters every single day. I have gone about six weeks and I've only gotten one gift through PayPal. And that was from you, Donna. Thank you very much. My emails have dropped off to a trickle. My viewers on my web, on my website, on my uh, YouTube pa uh, page, YouTube uh, uh, videos, uh, they've seriously declined. Is this my Goliath? Now, many would see this as a serious problem, but I think God is trying to tell me, trying to wake me up for something much bigger to come. The Holy Spirit did tell me a little over a year ago that at the end, he would cause my coffers to be empty and he would cause my shelves to be bare and now now more than ever this is this is true i literally have less than one case of bibles left on my shelves and i i only have a couple books and i only have just a small handful of cds left i have been deleting services like uh, grammarly uh trying to uh, uh, cancel my credit card processing software I canceled my hosting for the Azusa Street website, and I've done all this through the Holy Spirit, praying to, before I did these things. Uh, I can read, I can read the writing on the wall, but I think it funny that the enemy thinks that he has won. Nope. But just like David, I have yet to go to battle. Now, I could panic, and I could run to and fro, I could wag my tongue. I could flail my arms in the air, or I could remember that God is in control and God's will will be done. Amen. My bills will be taken care of one yes, way or the other. They are. And if not, then they will, must deal with it when we're raptured and we're out of here. <laughs> so I don't worry about that. Nope. All this is just another sign that we are going home so yes. very soon. Yes. Look at the world. Amen. Look at all the wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes, tsunamis, volcanoes, pestilence. Famine, economic collapse, which is almost on top of us. The dollar as the world's reserve currency is no more. And that is gonna cause a currency collapse. And America is Babylon, and Babylon is destroyed in one hour. Other ministries have money in the bank, warehouses full of literature, CDs, books, and the like, but not this ministry. We're more concerned of being rapture ready in the will and grace Amen. of God. When that day comes, what good will money do them in the bank? What good will warehouses full of books and CDs and literature do them? Yes, Goliath may win, may win his battle, but in the end, he still loses the war. And Goliath will gloat over his victory, but it still will be a short-lived victory. 
as the Son of God is coming to set all wrongs right. Thank you, Jesus. The only way to survive what is to come is to not be here, as in being raptured. Now, I have seen the destruction of America. I have seen much of the tribulation. I have seen unimaginable horror, death, and destruction everywhere. I was shown this so that I could warn you. I weep for the lost because they have no idea of what is coming right at them. Judgment comes. That's what comes. Other ministries have partners and friends. We have family. Amen. And we love you like family. We love you. And we pray for you like family you. because you are family. And each and every one of you have been a blessing, have been an absolute <laughs> blessing and a gift from God to us. And we love you so very much. And we keep all of you in our prayers. We really do. God bless you. God keep you and you're safe in his loving arms, just like he held me. Just like he held me. With much love and more grace from above. Amen. Amen. Amen.